That, that's a cool little Easter egg you have in everything. Just have the hot dog. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he's he's going to be in one way or another. You know, that's big, funny. The role may vary, you know, where he's in it. But. It's going to be like really strong for the first record and then we'll kind of, you know. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's Shift smart. Themes. Still World, uh, Where's Waldo? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> where's the Glizz, though? Fucking <laughs> 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 Glizzy McGuire. <laughs> Damn, where's the Glizz though? Comes out to do like the Disney sign, but it's just a wiener. <laughs> <laughs> you remember those like Disney Channel things? Like, as long as I go, like, the 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 uh, you're watching the Disney Channel. Yeah. <laughs> like, Comes out watching... and it just does the shape of a dick and they have to erase it real quick. <laughs> Walking Blind is hosted by overly emotional dudes who overthink and overanalyze everything. Nothing the host say should be taken as medical advice or opinion. Not professional. They're about to make that very clear. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Walking Blind Podcast. This is episode 124, the show where we like normalize checking in on the homies. I'm Mike. That is also Mike. And this week in studio, we got our boy Victor from Low Sight. What's up, everybody? What's up, homie? How's it going? Chilling, man. Mm-hmm. Chilling. I'm excited you're here. Yeah. I'm Even excited. We've been talking for. I know it's podcast part two. Hour <laughs> at this point. <laughs> so we we've we've kind of um have have fallen into this trap now where like people come in that like we sit down we shoot the shit with them and we don't start recording until later. It's like oh man we talked about so much cool shit already. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? But so we're here. We can. We're here. There's so much more cool shit. There is so much more. No, cool for shit. sure. So much cool shit. One hundred percent. Um. First off, I want to commend you because we talked about. Uh, you rocking the GoPro, the chest rig GoPro. Yeah. Uh, we, we talked about it beforehand, but I, you are a better man than me because if it was me wearing it, I would film myself doing this gnarliest. I'd take it to the bathroom when I pee. <laughs> I would, <laughs> I'd be like taking it with me to do like vocal warm ups in the bathroom, like, but like looking in the mirror the whole time. Just so much stupid shit. So much stupid shit. So the fact that you're just, you know, capturing awesome moment <laughs> yeah dude it, good it, on you man. It, it's a trip like it, it it legit had to like i had to get used to it for sure i was, I was like man it feels like i'm wearing a bra <laughs> what's going on like but yeah like it, it's it, it has been a trip like having people go up to it and be like yo what's up low side blah 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 it's like, all up oh, in your yeah. chest yeah dude i'm like eyes up here buddy yeah, yeah. But, I'm up here, guys. Yeah. Yes, I'm up here. Yeah, it's it's a trip though. Like it has been it it has been one of those things. It's like kind of a crowd pleaser thing. So yeah. it's been a trip. I like it. It's, it's a you know, people wanna it's like, hey, you wanna wanna be on this video, do something crazy. Yeah. Do something a little different. Um, so you were saying that you joined Low Sight. I mean, you're you're I feel like we have a bunch of young guns on the show lately, so having somebody closer to our yeah. age is, is nice. Is nice. <laughs> so you you've been I mean, you've been playing in music long before low site yeah dude different bands we don't have to name all of them yeah. but you know different bands and then so how did you joining this band come about <laughs> and then how's it been ever since it, so that's it's a long story in its own like there's a lot of twists and turns but I, I will i'll keep it simple um you're like i joined next question yeah <laughs> pretty, pretty much i took over and it was a done deal no so like i have been making music on and off for about I want to say 20 years, maybe 18, 18 in the heavy scene, but like started off with like, like my first band was a, an emo band. Hell yeah. And I was like, I love the emo music. I love the Midwestern emo especially. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, yeah, dude, like I want to be like the get up kids or mm-hmm. like the act line trio. And yeah. there's just a lot of bands. It was just like, I love, I just love singing in general. Mm-hmm. So um yeah i had a lot of fun trying to start bands and you know i was in and out of a bunch probably i want to say about eight or nine um but i was giving up i had given up on music because i'll 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 tell a quick summation of one of my longer bands i was probably in this band for about five six years um i won't say the name of it um they know who they are um it was rough dude because we had kind of signed a contract and um we stopped playing local shows unless you know they were kicking us down heavy gotcha and we were 
recording the studio album, which we had been recording for almost like a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And we were already, we were prepping a South American tour, um, backed by some solid names. Again, just leave out some of the stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and it came one day where like they hit me up and they were just like, yo, we need to have a band meeting. And I was all like, okay, cool. Let's do it. And the guys are all like, Hey, um, so-and-so said, you know, that we have to kick you out of the band. And I was like, really? Uh, label decision or label decision. decision. Interesting. Okay. And they're all like, um, we're going for a certain look and you don't fit that look. And I was like, well, what do you guys think? And they're all like, nah, bro, we're going to back you. He's like, you're, you're our boy. It's like, if we go down, we're all going to go down together. And I was like, all right, cool. We need to go have this talk with, you know, said person and handle this properly. Um, so we went, took care of business. And I ended up leaving the band um, because when time came to make the decision, they all kind of double backed on me. And they were just like, yeah, you know, this and this. I'm only here because of so-and-so. Well, I'm only here because so-and-so. And I was like, all right, well, if it's what you guys want, I'll step down as a vocalist, but I'm taking all my stuff with me. Mm -hmm. um, you guys can, you know, do what you can with your music. And I'm just going to bounce. So I I had lost motivation completely, dude. Like, I was super down in the dumps. And I was just like, yo, <clears throat> like, what am I going to do? And... So I kind of gave myself like maybe a year or two off and I, I started doing projects here and there and just nothing really filled that void of like that friendship. Yeah. So I was just like, damn. So I was in another band recently. I clashed with the guitars too, too heavy, had to sever ties. And um, my wife, um, she put together a show um, with Coastal Angels, which was a, a beach cleanup group, which I was telling you guys it was at dpiazas yeah one of my favorite venues um and so she set this up it was a bunch of my homies bands and i was the mc so i was just going out there presenting people and just talking to the crowds and just doing my thing because i'm a natural talker dude i love talking and i met this band their name was enamore at the time and i was like oh that's my boy carlos okay cool and Funny stories that I, I had auditioned for that band once before. And oh, shit. at first everything was going cool. And they were just like, yeah, we'll, we'll get back to you. Um, but they never got back to me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, right, I'm, I'm not even tripping. I'm mm -hmm. like just doing me, just going to work my magic, you know, do my thing. And I was in a band at the time on and off. Um, and I went to that show and I was just like, man, I'm going to be the singer for them. Like, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. Yeah. And I, I just, I loved their music. Their music had a lot. It, it was just a mixture of different genres. It was just like, this isn't typical heavy music. It's not a typical hardcore band. It's not a typical metal band. Like, I really don't know. There's just, there's it, something special. It, yeah, that. dude. And I was just like, all right. So later on down the line, I was getting tired of my band and I, I told my wife, I'm like, I think it's time for me to hang up my mic. Like, I think I'm done. Yeah. And she's all like, you know what? You do you. She's like, you, you know, you're, I, I back you in any decision you make. Um, and I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't feel like I can do it with this band. And then out of nowhere, I got a text message from my drummer and he was like, Hey bro, what are you doing? And I was like, chilling i'm hanging up my mic <laughs> i was like i was like i'm polishing the last mic i'm ever gonna use <laughs> um and he just like he hits me up and he's all like hey you want to audition again and i was like audition again yeah and he's all like are you still in that other project and i was like yeah but i'm planning on quitting yeah and he's all like well shoot through I show up uh, audition um I, it was funny i actually auditioned with a friend of mine and he was just like bro come on He's like, really? I'm auditioning with you. Really? <laughs> and I was just like, nah, bro, it's not even like that. And he's all like, no, oh, come on. So, yeah, um, a couple weeks later, they hit me up and they're like, yeah, uh, you know, we want you in. Your first show is in two weeks. And I was just like, excuse me? <laughs> Sick. They're like, yeah, we're playing Chain Reaction in two weeks, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, nice. all right, cool. Let's go. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, 
that's where it all kind of just started. We just, I just, I really only knew three of their songs and I kind of ad-libbed two. Mm -hmm. And from then on, it was just like, we just kept at it and just, just, it's just been going up since then. Yeah. That's sick, man. Yeah. It's dope. It's, it's always exciting, especially, you know, like you said, like you were stoked about this. Yeah. Like before you even joined the band, mm -hmm. like you were stoked on it. Yeah. And that's, it's a cool feeling to go, okay, now we're here. What can we do to fucking like get yeah. this train fucking running? So that's rad. It's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. As, and as a vocalist, to be excited about a band where you're, like you said, the different styles and like knowing that you can do, you have a lot of things you can do with your voice. Yeah. Makes it fun. It's like, anyway, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> so with uh, with with low sight after you join now are all these dudes these dudes are younger than you right yeah okay all of them so as an old man I got the, I got the question because <laughs> I'm always curious how is it competing with like that fucking youthful energy or <laughs> keeping up with that like youthful energy <laughs> I love my boy Ivan but <laughs> good lord bro there are so many times where I'll tell him like. Yo, if you're going to jump on me, give me a little bit of a warning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, dude, oh, so we played a show in San Jose, and you know how wild he gets. Dude, yeah. yeah. I was, when when we played together, because we all played Noe's mm -hmm. uh, uh, Benefit Show. show. Shout out, Noe. I was watching you guys play. Like, I'm telling you, I told you before, I, like, I'd watch you up front, like, you're up here ripping it, and then I just always, like... <laughs> he's fucking watch. like doing spins and like he's still playing Dude, clean I, i'm the exact same way when we're playing like yeah. i'm looking to see what he's doing yeah. because it fuels me yeah, like yeah. i'm all like damn this guy's i gotta step it up i gotta yeah. i'm over here <laughs> <laughs> relax bro relax <laughs> no but there's been a few times where i'm like yo give me a warning so yeah. when we're in san jose i didn't know where he was and we're dude it was packed we played uh it was a uh, playback studios and we played in like a a parking lot and it was packed gang of people Sick. and we're just like yo like all right we're just gonna show out we we drove all the wall i flew but they we had driven out to to san jose to play with our, our boys in yokai and we we're just like let's go let's do it he didn't give me a warning that he was going to jump on my back during the set with his guitar on. Yeah. And I toss him. Oh, shit. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. I see him. He gave someone his guitar before he fell. But you just see him rolling. And then my boy picks him up. And I was like, don't do that. <laughs> you <laughs> the will fact die. that he had the Good ability... Morning. To hand his guitar hand off, his guitar off while he's being thrown. God, that's dude. something my old ass wouldn't have the no. wherewithal to fucking. No. I, we're going together. Yeah, You're going down, going down, <laughs> going down. Which, going uh, down. dude, I'm no. gonna land on this neck. That's it. That's it. It's done. I gotta get a new guitar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So keeping up with these guys, it's 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 been. My my drummer's kicked me in the chest. Hell yeah! Like he's gotten off his kit, runs into the pit, does his thing, comes back and. Jump kicks me right in my chest. And I'm all like, okay, I still have a couple songs to go, bro. Don't be doing these things. That's why you have the GoPro. Yeah, dude. Now it's like, don't kick the GoPro. Yeah. Don't kick I, the GoPro. I want to say also it was your drummer that like when he went up, and got all set up and getting ready to play, Steve was like, he's been in the woodshed, man. He, he came here to put it work. <laughs> I was like, he's like, I could tell just by looking at him, he's fucking just put it work. I was like, all right. And that, that's, a, that's a common yeah that that boy when i tell you he practices more than anybody i've ever jammed with Dude. bro like it's wild how much he practices like i'll call him what are you doing Jam. uh, oh, i'm jamming i was like bro it's 10 30 at night yep. it's like yep gotta get my chops up and i'm all like no you don't go Dude. to sleep yeah, that's, <laughs> that's like the some one of the best things that you can have yeah because yeah. that's your that's your entire backbone yeah 100 uh, we're like I mean, no Brian Rice is Martin. Martin fucking rips it. But then for Torture Culture and Easy Out, our boy Steve plays drums, and he is in the fucking lab. Yeah. Like, yeah. all the time. Like, when I first met Steve, I, I even talked about it on his birthday. What I walked into this to Blue Room Studios, said what's up to everybody, met Steve for the very first time that day, and he's just sitting on the couch focused on, on music, right? As soon as he got, I didn't even put vocals down yet. As soon as he got a, a CD 
with like the three songs that we were working on. He was like, all right, guys. And he bounced and he went straight to fucking practice the songs. And like, Damn. I was like, thanks for hanging out. <laughs> thanks, bud. <laughs> see, you so, in, see you in a couple days. Yeah. Like what, 15, 16 years later yeah. now, he's still Damn. rips it, still, still kills it. Um, we have a lockout in Orange County and he's there always. Yeah. Damn. Just putting in work. That's crazy. But then he also plays for. I was wondering. I there, I, what lockout? Right next to stages, Gemini. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because yeah. there, there was one by my pad and I saw, like, I heard a hardcore band jamming in there. I was like, who's the. No, nah, it's not. No. Nah. <laughs> I don't know who this is. But yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, we're at. Uh, actually now moving forward because before it was like um because steve also plays for voodoo glow skulls really mm -hmm. okay so before it was like uh steve and then some of the guys from death by stereo yeah. uh sun must die was in there um they're all moving out so now steve's keeping the room and it's basically gonna be split between torture culture easy out and burner state damn that's so, cool yeah. all homies that's some, that's some nice company to have you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. so and it's right there but it, like literally we can walk there from stages yeah so that's cool right around the corner um i love stages it's a cool venue i, I just i'm like i want to see it fully packed out yeah dude for a show yeah like i want to see it completely packed out for a show um but that would be sick we'll see that that spot uh that uh, i think last Last week on the podcast, my intuition was right about the show uh, that we played on Tuesday. Because FTG? Yeah, FTG. I love that place. Rad venue. I love that it. That venue fucking With their sick. black lights and everything? It's sick. And Super and dope. their sound is great. Yeah. Stage is a little awkward, but sound is great. The drummer's in like the corner? Yeah. It's yeah. weird. It's like a, like your stage is like a hallway. The drums yeah. are in the corner and then everything else in front of you, oh, like to the side. But it's a cool venue, and and we plan to um, book a weekend show there, and then like really like that that and place stack it. that place gets packed with like sixty yeah. people. So, but so the the show that we played there, like I kind of like I I had a, like a weird feeling about it, just because the show had been moved from L.A. to Santa Ana, and then like oh, two yeah. yeah, so then two of the bands dropped yeah. day of, and they were the Santa Ana locals. Wow, they were the so that's crazy. Yeah, so it's us and then um, AS Luna from Seattle. Oh, they're they're so dope. And then Veins of Black, Veins but, of Black. That's with boys. So, <laughs> it, but it was like like the the local draw wasn't there. Yeah. So we pushed it, but it's also on a Tuesday night. Yeah, do you, you know? Mean? So whatever, like, um, but the show, you know, like we had fun. We played yeah. AS Luna boys killed it. Uh, they're uh, fucking rad, and they had a fill in guitar player. I forget his name, but he also plays in Pine Box, who was at our um, Tacoma show. Oh, sick. Yeah. He was like, I saw you guys play with no bragging rights. I was like, oh, yeah. And we were up there. Yeah. It's like, that place was way too big for us. <laughs> uh, but, cool uh, venue, but man. Yeah, it's a cool venue. But um, so, yeah. Yeah. So, like, I, I, like, I was like, man, I, we had a good time. We had fun. I want to go back and play that venue again. But like with like proper promotion, yeah. Yeah. set up a proper show and get everybody out. There. Where's it at? It's in Santa Ana. Oh, okay. Um, it's called FTG Warehouse. Yeah, we've we've played it a couple times too, yeah. and I think the first time we played it was it was pretty bare. It was on a Sunday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The second time we played was a Saturday, and it it, it got pretty packed out. Yeah. We we're like, yeah. okay, this place does have potential. Yeah. And we played with differences. Sick. So it was just like, yeah, I like this place. Uh, the sound was ridiculous. Ridiculous. It's good. Yeah. It's it sounds great in there. Um, Sean is going to be on the show in July. Oh, sick! Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, so talking to Jerkins' voice too, but yeah. So that that show was like a. It was cool. It was cool to like play there. It was cool to see like you know the touring bands come through and like rip it. And yeah, it was a good time. Um, but it was uh, I like I just I just had this gut feeling because. It, it moved yeah, from place showed, to place. Show changes. And it was on a and Tuesday then night, dropped. and then locals dropped, and I was That's like, crazy. "Okay, you know, whatever." Um, but yeah, I want to go back. I want to play that fucking yeah again with like a full, solid ass bill, you know, whatever. I love that feeling when you go to a venue and you're just like, "Man, yeah, I want to go back. Yeah, I just want to play there again. Yeah, yeah. so 
Yeah. Dude, we should. Uh, I'll let you know. We looked that shit. Yeah, let us let us know. We're okay. open for everything. Yeah. Like right now, we're. Yeah, we're just we're just booking like crazy <laughs> right now. Like we already have dates up into June twenty eighth. And you guys are, you were saying you guys are getting ready to start. Yeah. You're going to hit the road, right? Yeah. So we we have it. I think we barely announced it a couple days ago. Like we are hitting the road. We're going to go to Arizona. Going to be in um, Tucson, Phoenix, and then Palm Desert. Um, Yeah. It's going to be our first time on the road together. It's like. You guys going van trailer? Yeah. Well, no trailer. Just van. Emptied out the back. Mm -hmm. Took out two rows of seats. And we got a nice little. It's a 15 seater. Oh yeah, but we yeah. just ripped out the two backs. Sick. Yeah. You guys rent the van, or you guys we, bought? We rented it. No, nah, we rented it. Yeah. yeah, and then we also we dude we're like we're like let's just do it. So we got an Airbnb also with the pool. Ooh, uh, okay. So okay. It's like we're gonna do it, do it. Okay, that's what happens when you can tour and you also make money. Yeah, <laughs> when you're touring as a, as a as an adult. As an adult. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude, I was just like, let's, yo, like. I'm old, bro. I yeah. don't. I don't want to sleep in the van. I've done that. I don't want to do it again. I've got sleep apnea. No. <laughs> oh, no, the last CPAP machine and bro, shit. That, was, that would suck. I told my wife if I ever get to that point, like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Well, I think too, like, especially when like you're, when you have like a job and you're able to do it. It's like almost like a fun vacation. Yeah. That you get to like also like jam and you know jam with your friends and stuff. One hundred percent. I I always <laughs> I'll never forget like we did this run with Give Him Hell and the one night that we got a hotel room was because everybody was just fucking like I had had swine flu at the beginning <gasps> of the tour Damn. Jake ended up with like strep throat <laughs> Yeah. Somehow, I thought you were saying you guys were like too hammered to like go anywhere. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, and then um, it was just like this, like okay, we're gonna get a hotel room for this night. And but then like there was really nobody staying there, so we we told the guy at the desk that there were only two of us, and then like six of us hopped out of this fucking yeah. Room. And they he was not happy about that, um, but it was even just to sleep on the floor in the room was nice. You know, it's a big <clears> difference. <throat> Who, uh, who's the band that you guys are going out with again? Uh, we're going out with Scuffed, and they're from, I believe they're from Yuma. I want to say they're from Yuma. If I'm butchering it, I'm sorry, guys. Who, somebody was telling us about like a like a new spot in Yuma that just like, it's in the middle of nowhere and goes off. Was it the skate park? Is that what it was? Well, there, I think there's one, no, Prison, is it Prison Hill? I think that's it. I yeah, that's, that, it. that's the one, we were trying to get a show on there Friday, mm-hmm. but it's already booked. Um, I think Fatal Wounds is playing that day, oh, that okay. Friday. So it's like, so we decided to stay away from that side. Jump on the bill. Yeah. Well, dude, <laughs> it would have been awesome if we could. I don't know who, I don't remember who's booking it. But um, Ceasefire is all like, you know what? Prison Hill's going to be taken up. So we'll, we'll work something for you guys and see what's up. So, Dude, shout out to Ceasefire, man. Like they're, yeah, dude. Uh, they're fucking grinding. Yeah. And they're trying to do everything they can to just put on awesome shows 100 percent, and not just awesome shows bro like they put on these bands that are just like just just for the like to get that that extra bit of exposure yeah and it's just like i i I love brandon i love david yeah and it's just like bro like they've put us on some good shows like legit thank you guys we we played a we played a show in marietta um and that opening band it was a ceasefire show yeah it was an opening band i forget was it at that gym no, no, no it was like a brewery. It's a oh, place. okay. Um, and there's an opening band, and these kids were like 16, maybe even younger. Damn. And they were young. They were good. They were good. And um, and David was like, "Yeah, dude, like they're they're good. Like they're you know we're putting them on shows." I was like, "Fuck yeah, dude!" Like I, I remember being 16 and trying to fucking get on shows with people. Dude, like, dude, it's crazy. Like I think we so we do a lot of shows with Condor also. Shout out Condor. Yeah, mm-hmm. Shout out Brandon. And. They put us on this one show at uh, Bricks in Huntington Park. And I love that venue, too. That venue is, like, low-key. It's a banger. And uh, this was the upstairs stage, smaller room. But they put us on with, I think it was Funeral Massacre and False Witness. Okay. Shit. Dude, like, all of them were, like, 17, 16. I was just like, damn. (laughs) 
Bro, like, dude, kids are so good at music. Yeah, dude, like, I, don't know, dude. I, I don't how how <laughs> YouTube. Yeah, do you like YouTube, man. the cult? The culture went from like learning learning by ear. Yeah. To like, oh yeah, yeah. I just I watched this video and dude showed me how to sweep. It's always, <laughs> it's always something, man. I remember like the sweeping stuff when that came through, or even just like even like like uh, because like I I started out in the punk rock scene and then yeah. like, there's a couple of shredder bands in punk rock like like strung out with like a big one for that. Played with them before. But like Thrice was like the band that I I like I like to say that Thrice killed punk rock because. <laughs> they, they. Uh, I love. I You're love Thrice. You're not wrong. But they were like the band that like took kids from like it was like a difference between like the fast picking punk riffs and stuff, to like, like like oh, metal kind of riffs yeah. that lead into like more like like breakdowny two steppy stuff, and then like punk rock kids were discovering that, and then like their style changed overnight, and it was just like, dude, it was wild, oh. like weird. We can do technical stuff. Yeah, and it was hard for me. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> Dude, their ba- that bass line for at in Stare at the Sun. Tell oh, me that's, dude. That's ridiculous bass line. Yeah. I was like, huh. Yeah, I that. don't really, I didn't like a lot of their newer stuff, though. Like, Artist in the Ambulance, to me, was like. That was it for me. That was gold. Yeah, that's, I stopped after that. Yeah. I, I saw them, they, they did the Vagrant 26-year anniversary. And it was the Get Up Kids, uh, Alkaline Trio, Thrice. And I was just like, Sick. this is a dope show. Why is Thrice playing all of their newer stuff? Like they yeah. could have played artist in the ambulance in, total, in totality, and it would have been good. I would have been like, yeah, "That's." Dude, I, I, was, I was at the artist and ambulance um, CD release show. Sick. And they had they had like a European tour or something. They had something where they had to like they were playing the show and then flying out to wherever they're going. Yeah. And so all their pedals, I think, were like sent. All the, or like, or or maybe Tepe, I, like some someone's pedals were were gone, so they're like. They kept making jokes about it, like all the cool ambient <laughs> stuff we we're supposed to have. Like I think they were calling it like the magic or like the something. They're like, it's not gonna be here tonight, guys. Like, sorry, but they yeah, it didn't matter. Like, I, I I kind of missed that because I feel like that was like their last yeah of being, you know, first what is it? First impressions, identity crisis, illusion of safety, artist in the ambulance, like that whole yeah that chunk that chain dude like. I said I, when I say like they kill punk rock, like I was in the most I, loving way. In the most loving way, I was definitely <laughs> a part of that. Like I le- wanted to learn their riffs, you know. And yeah. do they still rip now though? Like I, I went and got to see them play Deadpool. Oh, that's right, dude! I love that Me song live. It's so dope. Me and Ty, um, and our homie Felix went, and they're so good. They're still so good. I and you know what? I like a lot of the new Thrice stuff. Yeah. But also, I wish it wasn't. It's a different band. Thrice. It's a, it sounds like a different yeah. band. Yeah. Like I loved like that that record that had like Black Honey and yeah. um, Hurricane and all that stuff. Like it's sick, but it's not the Thrice that we grew up on. So yeah. it doesn't feel right calling to, it. To me, thrice. it was just like the melodicness of it was just like over the top. Yeah. Like it, it started off as the dad boss up and all of a sudden it's like, mm-hmm. I'm like huh? well, a lot of that came from like the Dustin. Tensor solo shit, yeah. yeah, like you know, took off. There, I mean, it's there's some bands that are just like, they're they're too creative, yeah, you know, to just be what they were, mm-hmm. like, yeah. And I just, it's like one of those things where it was such a change, you know, like A Five did it too, but theirs like was like over a long, yeah, band, so yeah. Kind of saw they went from like hardcore, hardcore to punk, to punk to like gothy, to whatever they are now, but. Like, dude, early Thrice. I saw Thrice play at Glasshouse for, um, oh, what tour was it? It's like the take, no, it's take action. But anyway, it was it was Thrice, Anti Flag, you know, years before they got canceled. Um, Which sucks because I love that band. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. Why don't my favorite things get canceled? Does that something say something about me? <laughs> yeah. Dude, I know. <laughs> um, but I remember going and like at this point, like I was a huge anti flag fan, but I was also like a Thrice fan, yeah. and Thrice was still pretty pretty new, and they opened with Phoenix Phoenix Ignition, yeah, and it was so awesome to like see everybody that was not familiar with them, being like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's mostly an anti flag crowd. It's like a, yeah. punk rock, a punk rock crowd. You know, they come out doing the you know clean acoustic yeah. thing, 
And then they just fucking destroy everybody, and the place just like blew up. They're like, oh fuck, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm I, I don't know. I, I I remember seeing Dustin do like solo stuff, and there's that song about um about like the the sun leaving, the prodigal son mm. leaving, coming back, and I fucking cried. I cried, and yeah. I called my dad afterwards. I was like, <laughs> hey "Dad, I'm sorry, sorry for all the shit that I put you through." <laughs> but I was like, "Incredible writer, dude. That so good, dude." I I used to study. I used to like study thrice lyrics. Really? Yeah, I used to like like literally. I would sit down, I'd read them, and then if there's something I didn't understand, I would try to find the reference. That's and funny. Figure. Yeah, because some of it, dope. some of it was in the Bible. Some of it was like just like, uh, who was it? Edgar Allan Poe, I think he took a lot. Of, a lot That's of them. dope. Dude, I, I, I like, had no it's, idea. It's like the rapper thing with like the double and triple entendre. Yeah, there's yeah. A lot of that in Thrice song. Yeah. Dude, that was me with Coheed and Cambria. Oh, dude, dude. I love. <laughs> created a whole fucking universe dude, that's still yeah. going dude, to this day. Th- those comic books, <laughs> I love each and every one of them. And it's just like, I've seen them live too many times. But Coheed and Cambria, they rip, dude. Like, live, they are I, so good. I just can't, I can't wrap my brain around how he shreds so hard and still Insane. sings. Yeah. His like vo- his voice though, dude, is like when he's taught when he's giving an interview, he's like, yeah, so the best. I know. And then yes. when, he's, when he's seen New Jersey Bound, like, what the yeah. fuck? Oh, is damn, <laughs> Michael Jackson meets Alien Ant Farm over here, yeah, that, dude. That. That. Like really cool. I like her, <laughs> but like ten octaves, yeah, dude. Higher, like what the fuck? I shoot you run. <laughs> it, you know, it's it is weird saying this now uh, on this podcast but Koei Koei is, is I remember I forget what album it was but it was my first time like headphones and like I'm, I'm gonna listen to it from start to finish and because I was already like a fan of like some of the, like the more popular songs but I oh, what album was it but I was like emotional like like there's parts yeah, that got me I was like dang dude this is this dude, is really good if it, it, that's another one if you really listen to like the lyrics and you like kind of see the whole story that they're trying to tell it's like the fact that you've built this entire universe yeah. Yeah. in these songs is insane. Yeah. And it's like, when I like, because I listened early on, like right around that time, I was getting into like Mars Volta and Coheed. Yeah, Mars Volta, bro, that's another band. That you know, and then you just like put on headphones and you're listening to like, like and television. So much. Right? Yeah. It's like, there's so much going on, but it's yeah. so beautiful, but it's so cool. Yeah. It's like ambient shit. And then like, oh, there's, they're also telling you a bunch of cool shit yeah you know like yeah that 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 type of shit i think for me like as a vocalist helped me with like oh let's not just like just do something straightforward and heavy like let's try yeah. and weave in like story yeah do you like that's I make it interesting <clears throat> so like storytelling or like giving that giving that like just description of something that's happened to you or or like something that you're going through because yeah. you don't know who else is going through it. Yeah. And it's just like, because a lot of the songs that I write are, you know, facts. Mm. It's like, yeah, it's just, it's a trip sometimes. Yeah. And when you have somebody, like when we played San Luis Obispo, kids are like, that song really touched me. And I was like, dude, yeah. like, yeah. Thanks. Like I don't know. I don't know what to say. Do, you, do I hug you? No. Yeah, hug but yeah it's a trip, dude. Like I love oh, it. Dude. Just hug it out. These kids need hugs, dude. Yeah, bro. <laughs> bro I, <laughs> if it was a different day and age, maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> hug them, but be careful. About it. Yeah. I've had some really funny like interactions with dudes who are just you know afraid to show their emotions. Yeah. He's like, all right, I'm gonna walk away now because I think I'm about to cry. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite, my, my favorite one you told me was the one at Tough Love. He's like, "Fuck you for making me cry in front of my friends." Oh, that was awesome. Uh, uh, <laughs> I love that. Caught me off guard. I was like, "I thought he was gonna try to fight me." Like, Dude, fuck you, man. You made me cry in front of my friends. I was like, "Oh, <laughs> sorry." Dude, I could I could say the first time, the first time I saw that video that you posted, where you gave the speech about mental health. Mm. I'm sitting there on my phone. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, bro, what's going on over here? So I was like, Damn, my wife wasn't even home to see it. And I was like, all right, it's cool. I'm a big boy. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. But it's just like, I, I think I started getting more into like no bragging rights because of like, I just, the messages. So I was just that's like, awesome. man, like that's what, and that's what I love about music in general. Like if your music has a message and you deliver it properly, 
Hey, you got a lifelong fan in me. Yeah. And it's just more than just like, it's more than music, bro. Like to me, it's like, it, it is life. It's, it's who we are and what we, you know, what we do and it's, help as many people as we can, yeah. regardless of, you know, our own emotional state sometimes. Dude, and some like I I remember like being younger, Creative Void days. Like I was just like a kind of a, like a young asshole kid, right? Like I can admit that now, looking back on it. Like yeah, I was kind of a <laughs> dickhead. Um, and I I I remember there being a time when like we showed up to play the San Diego show, and the promoter didn't. I I just, I don't know if they didn't realize we were a heavy band. We're the only heavy band oh. on the show. And because of that, nobody, <laughs> like, nobody's there, right? Yeah. And I was just like this fucking asshole kid. I was like, what the fuck, man? Nobody's here, whatever. Um, like, there was, like, a kid sitting on the stage while we were playing, like, like some disrespectful shit. So I was just mad, <laughs> right? Like, I was just like, mad. And um, I remember us, like, we played, finished, walked outside. And, um, you know, we're sitting in the back. We're telling jokes, you know, whatever. And this kid walks up and was like, you guys are in Creative Void, right? And I was like, yeah. And I, I, I so being a fucking asshole, I totally thought he was just, he was like, dude, like, um, and like, he looked nervous. And he was like, dude, I, I, I didn't know you guys were playing tonight. Otherwise, I would have been here. He's like, there's apartments across the way. I, we were sitting on the back porch having a cigarette. And I heard you guys playing. And I recognized your music. He's like, and I ran home. And I got my record so you guys can like sign it. Oh, and I'm fucking weird wow. about signing things, right? And then so like I get to talking to this kid and he's like, you know, basically saying like, hey, I, you know, like you guys and no bragging rights, you guys have been in constant rotation, like really helped me like with mental health. And That's like, crazy. Like mm-hmm. I had moments where like I wanted to kill myself and, and these records like like basically saved my life. Wow. Right. And I don't think I've ever talked about this on podcast. I've never brought it up. But like I like I got emotional. Yeah. Because to me I'm like Dad, I was such a piece of and that like I remember it clearly as me like my mentality flipping yeah. that moment cuz I was so shitty in the show and I'm so happy he wasn't there to see it because if he had like I would have felt like Oof, such a yeah. fucking garbage that, piece of shit, right? Dude, would have left a bad taste in his mouth yeah, too. Yeah, that's why dude, it's like I've never understood that. Why punish the crowd that is there to see? You? Yeah. Why yeah. punish people exactly. that did show up by being like mad about like who the ones who didn't, you know? And 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 that's why like like after that and it, like even now playing shows like I'm happy if one person is there. Yeah. You're going to get the same show out of me whether and, there's one person there or no people there. Yeah. And like or more. And I, like I remember the moment being like like holy shit. Like I never I never would have thought that like shit I wrote in my bedroom would impact somebody else. Yeah. Right. And Jake comes over and of course Jake is being Jake uh, you know, and he's like, he's a <laughs> fucking doing, <laughs> fucking doing dog, like out here signing shit, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, dog, like, listen to this story. And you could see, like, Jake's a big ass dude. And he's like, oh, fuck. And, like, that moment hit him. Damn. Too. And we had this, like, like, moment, like, hugged it out with this guy. Like, yeah. fucking, do you want a shirt? You have whatever you want. Like, <laughs> and it was, it, like, I, like, legitimately, I'll never forget it. Yeah. Like I don't talk about it a lot, but I never forget yeah. it because I was like, that's the moment when I realized like, hey, you can't be like this fucking arrogant ass yeah. like, kid about this stuff. Like you like it is what it is. Like even if even if you think the shit that you wrote like doesn't matter, like it might to yeah. somebody else. Yeah. Yeah, we don't know what 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 <clears throat> what we do or anything. What what that means to someone else. Yeah. And like it's fucked up. Like I wish that it happened to me earlier, so I would have gotten out of that asshole stage <laughs> earlier, right? But like I don't like you know something something swished, and I was like, okay, I get it. Like that was like my my I, I get it. Yeah. You know something something for me. I've mentioned this before, but I don't think I've gone to this aspect of this experience. But I got to see Rise Against at Chain Reaction, Sick. and uh, yeah. and this was I want to say they were like. They were like co. They were they were on a run. I think with like, I don't know, it was like someone crazy, like no innocent victim or something like that. Yeah. Or, and we got to the show and it's packed, packed out show. It's chain. Yeah. Dude, rise against goes on, clears out. Everyone's outside. No one give no one give a fuck because they're a punk band. It's, wow. And so who were they playing with? I, I, that's why I feel like it was like a heavier tour. I think it was like, I keep wanting to say no innocent victim, but that might have been a different show. Mm. It was like I remember it being like a heavier show because I remember feeling out of place myself that's crazy and so um but 
like we went in and like I remember thinking like oh I want like let's get up let's get up close I'm about to pack out all these people here yeah. and it was me my eight friends and maybe like three other dudes Damn. that were that were watching them everyone else was like either hanging out talking yeah. while they were playing or they were like outside or like it was it was nuts but what I took from that was one I got to have rising as to myself yeah and then two I thought. Tim, the singer, I thought he performed his ass off. Yeah. And I thought it was so fucking cool that he did that. And it was, like, basically for us. Damn, you know? There's no crazy. no crying about, like, why is everyone outside? I don't even think he made any yeah. reference to it. Yeah. I think he just, they just played. He went through their songs, talked to us, basically, basically talked to us. And I don't know. I think maybe later on, subconsciously, I think for me that was, like, a big deal. It's, like, if Rise Against can play in front of... You know, basically nobody. Yeah. You know, but we you were... do this all the time. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I did it so much. I did it so much. <laughs> but dude, like, I, like that was big for me. That was like, that was, yeah. you know, I loved it. I, I was so, I left there thinking that was such an incredible show. You know, they could, they could probably thought like, man, fuck this show. Yeah. yeah. You know, but they didn't, they never said they it. Didn't say it. That's, that's they didn't cool. act like it. Yeah. And that's the big thing. That, that's what, like, sometimes you got to remind people like, yo, act like you've been here before. Right. Like, don't, you can't there's just certain things you can't say you can't do it's just like yo be grateful yeah there's you there's play music yeah. yeah yeah there's also this like meant that you know there's uh something to say about like the whole fake it till you make it thing yeah and, like part of it is like is okay cool i'm gonna we're gonna put on and we're gonna do this show another part of it is kind of convincing yourself right yeah. but at some point there's got to be like a distinction between like am i am i doing this just to keep pushing or am I doing this because I really believe I'm better than this yeah. right like and and that's where the line tends to be like oh you're just being a fucking asshole yeah like you're doing this for the wrong reason right you know um and that's and that's tough that's that's a fucking hard pill for a lot of people yeah yeah you know? and like the reality is like what percentage of bands actually make it what percentage yeah. of bands actually make this a fucking career like 100 percent. you know it's not a it's not a viable fucking living for yeah. you know as much as people might think it is maybe now it yeah. is yeah the fact that like you know knocked loose is on trending <laughs> on billboard charts and number one record like, things like that Dude, th those dudes it's, used to play in front of nobody nobody like, nobody ceasefire posted the vid a video of them playing in a backyard yeah yeah. And I was like, yo, and, and that when, was in 2016. And that's when they were like starting to get a little bit of like yeah. heat, you know. That's crazy. Like those dudes, they've they've done the tours where nobody yeah. showed up and stuff. And yeah. then they stuck it out and now they <laughs> it's, rule the world. It's insane yeah. because like probably in like our in our time in like let's say hardcore, right? Like we've seen the bands like like um, a day to remember blow yeah. up and become yeah. like a, a a national act, a well known name. We've seen bands like Ghost Inside, Ghost, Ghost Inside, Inside, fucking explode, right? We saw like bands like Devil Wears Prada. Mm -hmm. Nobody gave a shit about Devil Wears Prada, and then they became a career, yeah. like heart metal band. Yeah. Their music now completely different. Bring me but the horizons. Exactly. Bring me the horizon. Yeah. Um, like, so I didn't know all these things, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> like seeing these bands that are like metalcore bands where nobody gave a shit, or like you know whatever, and then they just made a name for themselves like that but if you look at the time that it took in between that's a grind yeah. yeah and like people fall off people quit playing people stop playing because it's so like not sustainable yeah for for a lot of people and it's like like everybody is so ready to get this like immediate like okay cool we're gonna fucking make it it's, yeah. like, it's gonna take a, a lot yeah, yeah. So a, a lot of shit. i think a lot of the I don't want to say younger bands because a lot of the younger bands right now are grinding. Grind. But a lot of bands don't know what it takes to like actually do stuff. It's like there's a lot of work that's involved with this. I I would the the best measure of your band is to leave your hometown yeah. and play outside of your yeah. hometown. Yeah. Like right now, I feel like and this isn't I feel like I was blessed with this and it's cool to see this generation right now, this era right now have it. You know, there's I, I grew up in a time when like like backyard parties, garage shows was like a thing still. Yeah. Like that was still a thing. And then but we still had a lot of cool prominent venues yeah, yeah. locally. You know, we still had the showcase theater, we had the barn, we had chain, we had all these cool places like local enough. So we had places to go and really work on our, our you know, 
our band and build, you know, and build. Right now, it's like it's cool because there's so many different spots that are popping up. Yeah, they're disappearing. You know, some of them are here for a minute and then they're gone, but they're like still popping up, which is yeah. cool because I feel like that's that that is you know there's a lot of ways for bands to be lazy, but I feel like there's also an opportunity for bands to like like get on you know whether they realize or not it's like when you play a different spot that's like you're you're building you're building yourself as a band yeah. like performing somewhere new like that's that's awesome like that builds you know how you react how you you know this it sounds so silly but like a, a venue that has no stage or a venue who has a high stage yeah you know like that stuff is like what you need to learn as a band i, I remember my first time playing on a high ass stage i was like what what the <laughs> fuck do i do up here <laughs> like uh <laughs> Uh, you know, and then I remember early on realizing like, oh shit, like, you know, I, I'm not, at least at the time I was like, I'm not, I'm not fit for like that big, I, I do well on the ground. Yeah. yeah. You know, I feel I, like floor shows, like for me, I'm like, this is like me or a low stage. This is me. This is like, we're going to do well. Like, or at least I, I feel. Too. Barriers. Oh, I fucking man. hate them. Really? Hate them. Dude, that's. It's like. <laughs> yeah. It is. So like. There should be people right here. <laughs> like, like House of Blues. Yeah. With the fucking, like, what are we doing with this? Yeah. Why is this here? That's funny. Like, it's just, it's just cool. It's cool to have, it's cool that, like, right now is such a time that it's, like, music is, I feel like music is thriving. I don't know about everywhere else, but, you know, obviously we get to see ours because it's, it's out yeah. here. Los Angeles, uh, you know, OC, IE. It's cool that that's, it's such a, um, it's, like, a good time for, and and it, and it shows when you have places to go, the 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 bands will come out. Yeah, like there's always been bands in our area. Yeah, but like there was that time where it's like it seemed like there wasn't anywhere to play. Like nothing's coming out. Yeah, but yeah. It's like no, they're, the bands are there. They just they have to like go to, you know, like for me, one of the things that used to bug me was there was a time when like uh, somebody made a comment. I've only heard it a couple times, but somebody said, "Oh yeah, MBR's from like like from Orange County." <laughs> Cause we used to play chain. That was like, yeah. cause our, our local venues were gone. Yeah. And so we rarely played the IE. And I remember hearing that. I was like, <laughs> no, 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 you know, nothing against the, against the OC, but it's like, no, we're from the IE. Like we're a Riverside band. It's just, we have nowhere to play. That's like, crazy. <laughs> we have nowhere to play. They were from Riverside to prove that we're from Riverside. <laughs> Dude. I like half of the people don't like, when you say Linwood bands, like you think Motor Pride, Jackknife, mm -hmm. it's like for us, it's like man, we gotta we gotta set ourselves up there. So now we have we carry the Linwood flag with us everywhere. Sick. Yeah, we have it, but it, it looks a little coppish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're just yeah. like, uh. So we <laughs> Got that. so we have a uh, we have some things in the works. You guys will see them soon. Um, yeah. But yeah, we have a couple shirts coming out. Oh, yeah. um, I love. We're it. getting them done for the run, so. We'll Sorry. have a bunch of stuff. We'll, yeah, I'll see See, repping from repping where you're from, it's rad. I, yeah, I used to joke on tour because I'd say like, "What's up, guys? We're in from Riverside, California, you know, and like nowhere, Pennsylvania, you know, some little place." And then I like I wouldn't get a reaction because people were like, "Huh?" But then like we <laughs> joke and be like, "We're no bragging, from Compton, California," <laughs> and then people would like pay attention. But now I like, I'm I love when. You know, I love when I hear like a place like, yeah. you know, that I've never heard before. So I'm like, you know, small to your town. Like, don't say you're from Boston when you're from Worcester. Yeah. You Dude, know, I, I, I legitimately had this thought the other day because we won't go too into it. Uh, Jake quit Torch Culture. He's no mm -hmm. longer in the van. And um, he was the Riverside from Torch Culture. So like, oh, we're Torch Culture from Riverside. Nobody's in Riverside anymore. So what do we... <laughs> Colton, <laughs> torch goes from the IE, but I mean, Steve's in Orange County. Torch your culture, nine hundred nine. Yeah, T T C nine hundred nine, dude. T C nine five one. Um, so I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I guess just yo, know, we're torch culture from Southern California, but it'll be interesting. Colton, Colton, Colton. <laughs> we're torch culture from the, from San Bernardino County. <laughs> just don't just don't go and say something backwards like we're 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 yeah we're linwood from low site california <laughs> uh, i've done that at a show uh, yeah <laughs> yeah so um from yeah, the Dino. I, I i uh i'm still 
on a search for a solid place, I inquired about a spot um, in Riverside, ooh, right off of Van Buren. It's a place that's been vacant for years now at this point. That's sick. Um, but it seems like they have, they already have a zoning set in mind for what they want to do with it, but it's also still been like the, the leasing listing has been there for like 565 days. So it like at this point it's like, well maybe you should fudge a little bit on what you <laughs> thought you wanted to put there yeah. and let me do something cool here. Yeah. Uh, Cause it has a parking lot Dang. right next to one of our favorite restaurants. Which one? Right next to Olivia's. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. So if you know, you know. Um, Dang. Yeah, it's the big building that's abandoned there, that's been abandoned for forever. Dude. Okay. So I won't say the name just because I don't want somebody to be like, I'm gonna fucking try and you know. But if you're from Riverside, you know what I'm talking about. Um, Hear that, guys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> move in now. Move, 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 move. Olivia's. <laughs> get into uh i think we got a couple questions we posted a little late sorry but i was a crazy ass day today and then <laughs> yeah i've only been coherent for like the last couple hours so. <laughs> all right so let's uh uh ask a couple questions uh christina wait what <laughs> any unexpected challenges you've faced as a band while planning your first tour <laughs> that's a great question from my wife <laughs> <laughs> um yeah um, it seemed like a white question. That's why I that one first. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess like the preparation for everything, like understanding or, or helping everybody understand like, hey, this is what we need to do. This is what yeah. we need to take. And, you know, just it, it's fun while working a full time job. So it's like making uh, reservations for the van, reservations for the Airbnb working my job at the same time answering messages from different promoters because at the same time we're still booking yeah so it's like we're, we have the, the this tour mapped out but we're also taking bookings for next month already exactly. so it's like just trying to keep track of everything and then remembering everything is is has been pretty difficult and do you guys, uh, does like one guy handle all the booking and everything or is it like a it's kind of a, a joint thing okay. but like we just have to remember to say it in the group message. Yeah. <laughs> and for a minute we had like two or three different group messages going because our guitarist just recently had surgery. Mm. So he was out for the last maybe four shows. Mm. Okay. And uh, we had a fill in. So we had a group chat with him and then our guitarist is back. So he's going to go on this run with us, test out his new arm. It's bionic. Sick. 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 it's not but it would be cool <laughs> all of a um, sudden fucking fast picking yeah. now it's just remembering like hey we got offered this show are you guys free are we down we're gonna be playing here be playing there and, and we don't have real limits yeah. so we'll play one show in Van Nuys the next weekend we'll be in uh, Santa Ana if we're not there San Luis Obispo yeah. it's like just remembering places and like to bring it up during either a meeting or like sometimes we'll just do discord calls and we'll be like, Hey, everybody get on discord. Like we need to talk. Sick. That's what we just did about the, like the tour. Like, Hey, um, how's merch going? Or actually Ivan's out right now, probably pressing shirts. Sick. So sick. Yeah. He's, it's pretty he's fun. Printer? Yeah. Oh, he's, uh, his, 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 brother-in-law so to say i think his homie he's a really good friend of ours and uh he's he's helping us with our our shirts to print them and ivan's out there helping him print them shout out to dario (laughs) always nice to have one of those guys in the yeah dude (laughs) it's fun um but yeah so it's a lot of work everybody's doing their part and we're all just trying to get there and then you know then we're still working on new music hell yeah so it's like oh uh, maybe that's a little teaser (laughs) <laughs> um but yeah trying to work on some new stuff and just trying to just bring everything together it's, it's been it's it's been hard but fun yeah yeah so it's like the like it, it's such a grind but the payoff in the end yeah. is like rad yeah dude like i was i'm still i'm still stoked we're getting we're, we're getting paid for 
two of the shows on on the tour. So it's like, yo, take and it. free food. I'll take it. Say less. If if we play the show and basically you buy me Taco Bell afterwards, yeah, I'm golden. Yeah, yeah. You had to say Taco Bell. Of course, of course, <laughs> of course Don't tell me you're a Del Taco. Bell. No, I loved. I love Taco Bell. Yes. I love Taco Bell. Yes. I just I, I like Mike. Uh-huh. I hate. I hate when they steal things. It's fair. <laughs> Sometimes they bring up stuff and it's just like, oh my god, it was so bomb. You try to go back. It's gone. Uh, Where is it? Like, no, it's not there. I got nacho fries the other day. Where it is? It's, like. it's in. It's in uh, Irvine. That's where it's at. <laughs> Because that's where the headquarters is, right? Is it? I think so. Taco Bell's headquarters? I think so. I feel like I should know this. You should. Yeah. <laughs> I should too, but apparently you don't. Yeah. Field Dude, trip. Like, I used to. I I used to love the hot Frito burrito. Oh yeah. And I was like, yo, that was my that was my jam. And then they changed it into this like those little crispy strips. crispy strips. And I'm like, yo, this isn't the same. So I'll buy I'll just get the the five layer and I'll get my own bag of hot hot Fritos. <laughs> That's it. Dude. Big boy problems. Oh man, dude, Taco Bell. I fucking love Taco Bell. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> Is there a happy hour? The 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 happy hour one dollar loaders or something like that. Oh, the loaded grillers? Yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, like, uh, when I was in high school, every day after practice, we would go get them uh, just because they were a dollar. So you spend 20 bucks and get the whole team something. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Lucy asked, uh, what's the story behind one of your songs? Wow. Um Obviously, all the songs kind of have a story. Um, but to give the one that probably means the most to me, I'm trying to think if it, yeah, it should be on our, on our Spotify. Um, it's a song called sepsis. And for a lot of people who don't know, sepsis is a blood infection. Mm -hmm. Um, and it could be fatal. Mm -hmm. Um, so my, my grandma had, um, Alzheimer's really heavy and, at that same time she was a diabetic so she would deal with sepsis a lot um and it came to a point where it was just like we didn't know what was wrong because one she had alzheimer's she didn't know really what to tell us Mm. but we kind of knew certain signs something was going wrong with her um but it's just like everything combined was such a heavy thing to deal with so the song sepsis is about you know how really how sepsis really takes over a person's body yeah and it doesn't just hurt the person that it's happening to it's also affecting the families and it's probably it's a hard thing to go through like it's crazy my my pops just went through it and uh he's he's good he's good now but you know it's 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 tough it's tough yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, Kiana Monet, what does self love mean to you? And any advice for someone starting that journey? Stop it, Jesse. <laughs> Wrong type of self love. No, I know the person that's what. <laughs> oh, is she talking to you? <laughs> the way that Jesse likes to love himself is completely different. <laughs> It involves a bunch of loaded grillers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, damn, that's. There was never a football team. <laughs> loaded grillers, hot wax. <laughs> that's a nacho cheese. <laughs> Dude, so uh, yeah. We're talk about after this. <laughs> Self love to me, wow. Um, to me, self love can like sim- just be something simple, like just doing something that has meaning to you. Mm-hmm. that brings you joy um it's gonna benefit you and not just not gonna be like a five seconds of happiness yeah because you know you, the alcohol there's drugs there's a lot of things that'll bring temporary happiness yeah. but finding that thing that brings true happiness and being able to embrace that no matter how insignificant it may seem to other people will make a big difference to you like me, I love shoes and hats. And like my bank account doesn't. Yeah. 
sorry, wifey. But I'm right there with you. Yeah, bro. Like, and that's one thing. Like me, I'm I'm a I'm a habitual shopper. Mm-hmm. But it's it's one of those things where it's like when you show up to a show with some crispy shoes and a crispy hat, you're just like, gee, like yeah. <laughs> I'm happy. Yeah. And it's not momentary because those are things that are like, like yeah, this is this is something I like. This is something that I've earned. Something that I'm giving to myself for being the person that I am. Um, mm-hmm. And you know you can write those off once you start making money. <laughs> <laughs> Duly noted. During, during my uh, my my rarely talked about hip hop days, I used to write off all my sneakers and outfits. Mike Diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> Show did. That's it's, on, sick, it's on YouTube. There's music videos that are on YouTube. Go look up. Go look them up. <laughs> if you actually YouTube Mikey Diamonds now, there's a different rapper named Mikey Diamonds. Oh, we funny. don't look the same. <laughs> you gotta look up his alter ego, Miguel Diamante. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one's that one's sick. Yeah. That one's sick. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> so, what advice would you have for somebody that's starting their? Uh, their self-love journey just do it be it be be <laughs> just do it just be open with yourself like don't be afraid to try things that you've never tried or like don't be scared like it's a simple act of like hey i don't really dig that and you know like you never know what you could you could be a, a crazy artist like dude, i just started painting Sick. Yeah, it was it was wild because I've done paint and sips, watercolors, or acrylic. Acryl- okay, acrylics, and like yeah. I didn't. I feel like I'm not that bad, and I was like, <laughs> like damn, I'm yeah, dope. Yeah, no, but dude, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, huh. <laughs> I actually have a decent hand with this. Like, I'm not a Picasso or. Oh man, I'm I can't. skip to like five years from now, and then like these guys on like art gallery. <laughs> yeah, he wears those, those hats. It's like hmm, yeah. you can really see the the feeling in that circle. Yeah, Dude, my, yeah, but my yeah. wife's trying to get me to to draw. Could we mention it in one of our episodes about how? I stopped because I realized that my family was giving my react the reaction that to my artworks. My artworks really good, and then, <laughs> and then they but then they gave it. Then my my cousin who's younger than me was like scribbling, and then they like praised it so hard. And you were like, and I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> <laughs> that's not good. So then like I I stopped. Yeah, I stopped doing art as a little kid. <clears throat> isn't so. isn't like Martin good at drawing too? Probably. <laughs> Yeah, why not? I feel like he's probably, yeah, he's probably he's like really good. I feel like I saw him draw on like a drum head or something like that. And I was like, when the fuck did you learn to do this? Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe it wasn't Martin, but I feel like it was. Uh, I did. I drew something at work. I don't even know what it was for. I drew something and I, and I left it there. And then I came back and someone had like hung it up. That's funny. I was like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yeah, she's like, she's like, I don't know where. I, she's like, I'm going to get you, get you drawing. I was like, I don't, I don't know. If Sounds like you, you guys do a lot of fun shit in LA. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just you know, her being supportive of my dreams and wanting to push me. Yeah, it, it's funny, dude. Because I think the first time I did it, <laughs> we were in Big Bear, me and my wife, but just on a on like a staycation, and we're all like, "Yo, let's go to the local brewery." It's like, "All right, cool." We spent six hours at a brewery. I was wasted. <laughs> and <laughs> they're all like, hey, if you guys stay another hour or so, there's going to be a patent sip. And I was like, really? And she's all like, you guys get a couple free drinks? And, oh, nice. you know, I was like, say less. <laughs> say less. Okay. I, was, I was already drunk. So I was like, all right, cool. Let's let's do it. Bro, I loved it. And I was just like. What, what are you painting? So sometimes it's like. They're narr- narrated sometimes. Like, they'll be like, okay, you're going to do this, this, and this, blah, blah, blah. But, like... Like Bob Ross? Kind kind of, but not really. Like, the ladies are like, you want to just place it on the canvas and drag down slightly. And we should do the couples thing. Where we paint each we other. Paint each other. <laughs> he, me and my <laughs> wife talked about doing... Well, there's a couple different things that she's brought up. Like, there's another one where you start a drawing and you pass it around and everybody kind of puts their painting on it. Oh, so it's like, it's just a bunch of different things that, you know, like that's, it's, it's wild, bro. Like, I don't I know mean, how I, we 
go about doing stuff. You just say like, okay, you draw the eyes, you draw the nose, and you keep going around. That'd be yeah, funny. We, we, really we should do, do a, uh, um, you know, we, like last week we talked to, with Brandon about doing like a barbecue. We should do like a, we should start doing like bonus content on YouTube. It'll be yeah. like, we could do a painting Dude, challenge. That'd be yeah. sick. So down. Three of us do like Bob Ross shit. That'd be sick. <laughs> I was I was telling I was I was telling Brandon uh, that you know we brought up doing like a a barbecue and I was like, dude, we should do make it a ceasefire thing, but we'll do like a a show like an all day event where all the bands that are playing, somebody from the band has to fucking cook some food. Damn. And then and Brandon was like, yeah, and then like the your slot on the show is based on how well your food does. <laughs> Damn. Why is everybody playing first? <laughs> six bands playing at the same time. It's unreal. So why did six people make mac and cheese? <laughs> oh man. That's pretty dope. Yeah, I love any idea that involves food. <laughs> All right. Next question. Uh Feel you, <laughs> Hollow, uh, from Slumped. What's your inspiration when it comes to songwriting? Life, yeah, life in general. Things that you know, obstacles that get thrown at you. Um, really, just about anything. I could be having a bad day, um, and I'll just take it to a pen and paper. Um, again, being if you've gotten into the depressed mood, pull out a pen and paper. And I'll just jot down. I, I'm not even fully writing. I'm just throwing phrases down or just That's cool. whatever's coming into my head at yeah. the moment. And then, like, it'll be just a paper just written all over, like, left to right, up to down, and just stupid. Yeah. But then I'll look back and I'm like, damn, that sounds cool. That sounds cool. That sounds cool. Like, like, I like a lot of this. But it's just, like, a culmination of just emotion. It's like, I like to call it emotional vomit. It's just like it's there. Sick. Sick. Well, before we move on, I have my I have a question. Um so Do you I, warm up? I mentioned oh, I think we have talked about this. We had we, we talked <laughs> about that. Um <laughs> so like yeah, you you your dynamic and how you can like you have, you can do the different screams and then you even have like that sick higher range like hardcore voice that cuts. And we're thinking like, dude, you've probably got a good singing voice. And then as I'm saying this, you went up on stage with uh, Catch and Release and you guys did the, was it Armor for Sleep? Armor for Sleep. Armor for Sleep cover. Yeah. cover. And I was like, oh, so he can't, he can't sing. sing. Yeah. So yeah. I, wa- I just wanted a little bit of what, what is your, what is your, um, I guess like what got you into like singing and, uh, and like, what do you, what do you do to keep that up? Because clearly you have it. Yeah. Um, damn. What got me into singing, I think I was six years old and I had a Walkman. Walkman. Yes. For those of you who don't know what that is, a cassette player. Did you have the sport one that had like the. I had the one. It was yellow and yeah, black. It was, yellow? It was yeah. wa- waterproof. I fucking love that. Yeah. Thing, dude, that was the shit. Oh, so good. The only tape I had. So I was broke. I, we were broke as, as kids, you know? And the only tape I had <laughs> was Brian Adams. Heck Everything yeah. I do, I do it for you. Yeah. Dude. I memorized that song and I just <laughs> sang it over and over. One day my grandma was listening to me and she's all like, you can sing. And I was all like, only Brian. I was like, I, this is the only song I know. But then yeah. she started, you know, feeding me Motown. Hell so yeah. Smokey Robinson, yeah. um, the Temptations, a lot of like the the Detroit Motown stuff. So yeah. I was just like, you know what, I like this a lot. Such a bigger influence, yeah, to, dude, to punk rock and hardcore than people wanted. Yeah, yeah, dude. Well, so, dude, so, so, so is like, hip hop. Yeah. Like a lot of hip hop. Like, so me, my phrasing, I like that the bounce from a hip hop line compared to like old school hardcore, like. It's very synonymous. Yeah. Like they have that same kind of flow where it's like triplets, mm-hmm. vocal triplets. And yeah. it's just like, I can do that. Love that. I love doing that. And it's just like, I draw, I draw from everything, bro. Like bach- I, li- I listen to bachata. I listen to cumbias. I listen to just about everything. And 
like I just recently started listening to bluegrass because their harmonies are insane. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, I like this, but yeah, I just, I just love singing. I've, and I think anybody, anybody can tell you if I'm not talking, I'm singing. Nice. And it's, it's like, I'm like that at work and there's some people are like, dang, you're giving us a concert. Like, it doesn't matter what it is. I'll be, I'll sing Lincoln Park and then I'll go into like, um, Ed Sheeran or I'll start just doing like random songs. And it's just like my karaoke list. You like, when I do karaoke, they'll be like, oh, are you going to do one of those heavy songs? And I'm like, well, you'll see. Yeah. And I'll do Lucas Graham, Drunk in the Morning. And they'll be like, why would you do that? And I'm Why like, not? Because I can. Oh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like that's pretty much like I knew at a very young age that I loved it. And it's just, it's more than just the fact that I loved it. I felt it. Yeah. So it was just something that was like, yeah, this means a lot to me for some reason. Yeah. And I just I've held on to it ever since. And the way I, I keep I keep it up, I sing every day. Whenever I get a chance, like when you're talking about singing in your car, I was singing the whole way up here. Dude, I've been I've been loving it. Yeah. I've sang so much. Yeah. <laughs> I've a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of community time. I've actually so I have I, I so I I've I can like I have I always have my belty voice. Like yeah. I always have that. And then, um, you've been working on the smooth, sexy though. I've been working on it. So like I've been taking vocal lessons for the okay. like, first time in my life. And so I guess it started, I guess now it almost like what, two years ago, like started it. I haven't done it in like a, almost a year now. Damn. It's crazy. So it doesn't really count. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the statement there is I did vocal lessons for a year. I did vocal lessons, <laughs> but for me, I, I wanted to like sing soft. Yeah, and I wanted to like really understand what falsetto was. So like a lot of the stuff I was, I was my songs that I work on were like softer songs or things yeah. that would have helped me explore that. But like, there's something about my voice in that range that like I had for a minute. What? <laughs> That's seven shit again? Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> dude, take the one shoe off, dude. dude. <laughs> Oh, I'm not hurting nobody right here. <laughs> Every time Mike goes out to pee outside, he I, just finds the, I, he the finds landmine. Shit. I love the it. one landmine. I love stepping in it. <laughs> Anyways, um, but like there's there's like a part of like singing for me that I found during the pandemic because like I was singing all the time. Like yeah. I was just you know, nothing to do. And so I like was able to find this like part of my voice that like, I don't know how to explain it other than just like, I feel like that's like my true singing voice yeah. for like singing. And so on these drives, I've been able to do it. Yeah. And so, and the way I know is like, there's songs like, like journey for me. Like that's like high. It's like yeah. kind of out of my range. But like when I started to feel this in my voice, I was like, Oh shit, this is that. I was like, I think this is like where my, my voice is sitting where it's supposed to. And so I started, I did faithfully Oh shit. and I was able to sing it. I was like, holy shit. So then I tried open arms, which is like even higher. Yeah. And I can sing that. And I was like, yeah. what the fuck's that? I was like, dude, this is so sick. So like now I'm like all excited to record like the easy out stuff. That's funny. Yeah. Like, here, here, here we go Friday? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. And, and and when you're hitting those notes, are you hitting it natural or are you using your falsetto? No, I'm hitting it natural. My falsetto, yeah. I still don't I still and don't you have a high register then. I I guess, yeah. It's like I don't know. For for falsetto stuff, it's still weird, like I still don't know if I'm if I'm clicking into it the yeah. like the right way. Yeah, I don't know if that makes sense. No, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, because for me, like I learned my falsetto listening to oldies, mm -hmm. yeah. like because R and B almost all yeah. of the oldie songs are in falsetto voice. Yeah, no, nah, for me it was uh, right. the Delphonics because oh, yeah. oh, yeah. they uh, uh, "Bet You by Golly Wow" mm -hmm. is in a super super falsetto voice. It's like instead of it being like down in a natural, it's like there's a spark of magic in your eye. So it's like you go higher and it's just like, damn. damn. He's, he's, I want you guys to know he was looking in my eyes. When I, was <laughs> <laughs> I don't know and if it's that, the placement. And now Mike's blushing. Dude. I'm, I'm blushing, dude. <laughs> there was a spark on my eye. I can't even look you in the eyes right now. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 
falsetto voice that they use in almost all of their songs and it's funny when when i do that song karaoke like people will be like yo but your singing voice your your natural voice is not that high and it's mm -hmm. like it's a falsetto voice you're yeah. using your head voice that's the beauty of that falsetto though is like you can like yeah. for me when i sing i'm natural bass like i'm yeah. low but my falsetto is like really really high <laughs> it pisses our, I, I did vocal lessons yeah. with him and it pisses our vocal coach off it's like funny. you shouldn't be able to fucking do that. Yeah. That's funny. The range is so the range is like insane. Yeah. But my mid range stuff is like not. Mike not Mike was in there with me in the vocal lessons for about three weeks and then he stopped. That's funny. That's not true. It weeks. was long. It was longer. <laughs> he just wanted longer. to learn the basics. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah, like, like I, I was like, oh, I know all this already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a natural. Yeah, makes sense. Have fun learning, losers. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude. Like, I, I don't think I've ever, I've never taken a lesson, and like, I would like to learn what my my actual range is, because mm -hmm. me right now is just trial and error. Yeah, that's my. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna try to hit this note. <laughs> oh, that's not gonna happen. It, it with with a vocal coach, it's interesting because like you pretty much have an idea of what your yeah. range is, oh, and they're my shoe they'll, now. huh? <laughs> I was like, it's not my shoe now. <laughs> Take your shoe off. I'll fucking throw it outside. Mike has been in this room with one shoe on multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It should be the one shoe podcast. <laughs> I know. And it's always the, it, was it the right shoe last time? <laughs> uh, probably. Don't get it on the couch, Michael. <laughs> it's not on the couch. <laughs> this, this, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it's just, just gonna here. toss it out the window. Gonna, gonna right <laughs> Thankfully, these shoes are old, so there's like not too much like yeah. groove in it. So you just be a. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was I saying? What was I saying? Uh, oh yeah, you're you're so a vocal coach will like will will push, like, for us. Uh, Wendy is insane. Like she's classically trained she's perfect pitch everything that's crazy so she'll like she'll she'll listen to us sing and she's like oh cool you're here she literally hit that note on a keyboard it's and nuts. she's like i bet you can hit this so like what what she would do with me because i'm so comfortable in the bass range she'd be like cool sing up here hit that note but here yeah. and i'm like i can't do that she's like yes you can <laughs> <laughs> so i had to like i i had we were singing like songs from like musicals and stuff like yeah, that i was that's singing funny. a song from cinderella uh <laughs> Ten, 10 minutes ago. 10 minutes ago. Yeah. And it was like, and I would sing it where I'm comfortable. She's like, cool, now sing it higher. Okay. But that, like, that type of shit pushed you. To, yeah. And then, and then when she would give us, like, because there were, like, what, five or six of us in the group, she'd give us, like, harmonies. Okay. She'd be like, you're here. Who, like, fucking, and then yeah. you're here and you're here. This is what you're doing. This is what you're doing. And together. And, like, that harmony would hit and we'd all be like, ooh. <laughs> Do you hear us? Yeah. Shit! You say you get those chills. You're just yeah. like, we're dope. They're like, we're, we were, but yeah. <laughs> just I, when that harmony, like when that harmony just falls into pocket, mm -hmm. you're like, oh fuck. I, I like looking for harmonies where they don't belong. Like, yeah. I'll be listening to like a random Silverstein song, yeah, and then I'll be like, I can harmonize that. Uh, yeah. And then when you actually hit the harmony, you're just like, oh, that was that was weird. Found it. Yeah. <laughs> My, my, one of my favorite bands that I used to do that with when I was first like starting out to I was like what are even harmonies was uh, MXPX oh yeah dude dude because he, he can hold, heal his notes out, yeah. so it's like oh you can like dance around with that my so this is I don't know what this means and this is when we like started to do our vocal lessons but um, F sharp 2 to C5 oh damn whatever that means it's a big range that's a that's a big range what's that 3 octave no one knows. Yeah. <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> the world doesn't it's even been, know. It's been lost in translation. Yeah. But dude, if you, if you, like, dude, like Mariah Carey, seven octaves. Yeah. Like, she can hit that dolphin note. <laughs> I've seen her in concert. Dude, that's wild. Yeah, that's wild. Was, it, was that pre-recordings or? Dude, so, <laughs> so when, when she was doing her residency in, oh, in okay. Vegas, so. We went, and I remember I I went knowing she's gonna be lip syncing, it's gonna be tracks yeah. and stuff. Exactly. Just new, tracks. Yeah, I just I've accepted this. I've yeah. seen some of her performances live in the last decade, and you know, very 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 hit and miss. So I was fully 
fully ready to just be like, I'm happy that I'm just in the same room as her. You know, it's exciting. So she opens with emotions. Yeah. And her first whistle note she does, she's too close to the microphone and basically hurts everybody in the theater because she like was too close and so she like had to do that and then adjust. But like, it was one of those things where like you look around and you see it on different people's faces yeah. where like, oh, she's really singing. And she- That's crazy. Flawless, dude. Those Those whistle notes are hard. Dude, she, yeah, she, she was so freaking good. That's crazy. I think the one band that I was extremely surprised of was uh, Boyz II Men. You seen Boyz II Men? Bro, in Vegas. Oh, uh, so dude, it's like it's hearing an, uh, an acapella group. Yeah, where you're just like, yo, their harmonies are insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's just like, yeah, I love this. Was this early? Was this like twenty? Like before before the lockdowns? This was this was, yeah, this was way before the lockdown. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cause I saw. I think this was before they had a residency there, because they oh, had their residency at the MGM for a while. Yeah, I remember thinking like I was like I was like oh maybe maybe because they were like, I was there for her like in February and then yeah. I think like, Boy Cement was coming in like, because it was like the end of February they were coming in like early March. Yeah. And so I was like hoping that like I was like well maybe they're here and maybe yeah. we'll come out and do once we day or something. That's crazy. Mm. Oh, that song. Once we day, <laughs> dude. Well, let's do a let's do a quick mental health check. Oh yeah, and get these songs <laughs> in, and then let's go get some food. Get some Taco Bell. It's, get, it's gonna get late, and then people are gonna have heartburn. I know. <laughs> mental health check is where we like to check in weekly, see where we're at mentally. That way we can see, you know, what are we doing that's keeping us in good place, and if we're not doing so so great, what are we maybe neglecting to do, or what's going on that is keeping us in a funk. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have Michael go first. We've been we've been ha- we used to have our guests go first, but then like we we discovered that sometimes they're like, oh, I didn't realize that's what you guys say. So, Michael, uh, I've been good. I've been just kind of um, just grinding it out. Got some work done on the house over the weekend. Um, been uh, like pushing on this uh, on these easy out tracks like. Um, I, so on on Saturday I wanted to go to the Muerte show. Um, I had to be in Montebello by like nine thirty in the morning, so got there early. Pretty much spent the whole day mixing and then working on other songs, and then by the time I was heading back, it was like five thirty, and I'm stuck in traffic on the freeway. And it took me so long that by the time I got to Pomona, I was just so exhausted, and I was like, I'm gonna go home. <laughs> I'm tired. Like I, I just. Yeah, so I I wanted to be there. The show looked fucking rad. And I'm kind of bummed I didn't make it, but you know, so I would I would have died if I was there. Yeah. Um, but other than that, like like it's things have been good. Um, kind of navigating this new. I know I kind of mentioned it earlier. Um, without doing like an official announcement, Jake has stepped away from Torture Culture. Um, band's still gonna keep going. We are gonna um like continue writing new music um you know we've got a guitar player in mind that we're going to be working with so that's going to be an interesting kind of shift uh moving forward and like there's no bad blood like um you know jake's got a lot going on so we all wish him the best like that's my fucking homie um and that's my boy but um you know that's going to be like a different like interesting like change of pace for torture culture because it's kind of been us from the beginning you know um and yeah other than that like just been busy with work grinding it out um kind of waiting to hear on some other things so i'm just kind of i'm in chill mode right now but things have been good i've been i'm in a good headspace um you know ready for whatever whatever comes next whatever yeah. comes next there we go victor where where are you at um i'm good i'm really good um i think i i hit a really turbulent spot not too long ago that i finally kind of battled through and like yeah man like you know being here being here with you guys yeah. like this is it's been a pretty crazy highlight for me so um i'm an avid listener 
and like yeah man like things have been way better and you know my 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 pops has been in the hospital for going on he was in there for 30 days and then got out for a week and then went back in he's been there for about three weeks again Mm -hmm. but he's getting better day by day Mm -hmm. um so like yeah my 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 spirits have been up and uh, you know all this stuff that we're doing musically and you know prepping for tour like it may it may be chaotic but it's that that lovely that chaos yeah. yeah dude so it's like i've been up there and you know i've got a strong support system yeah and uh you know shout out to my wife uh my wife no. yeah <laughs> shout out to her um and yeah you just you know just taking everything as it comes now not really not really letting things get to me like i used to um but yeah that's Pretty much how I'm doing right now. Yeah, man. You, uh, you, it's more than just, you, you said something how like when you were like you're battling through stuff. Like what what is like what does battling look like for you? Like what's like when you're in it? Like what's something that you're doing to like? So like, when I'm through? like when I'm like deep in it, I really I try to take a step back from what I'm feeling emotionally, and like almost taking that like outside perspective look at what's going on with my life and i found it easier i I used to shut down completely and i would hit this wall of depression that started affecting a lot of people around me Mm -hmm. and like i would just shut myself out from everyone so i'm like oh you know i'm not in a good place right now don't hit me up and i stopped doing that so now it's like, um, I talk more about what's going on with me and I write, I write a lot more, which is kind of impossible sometimes. Cause I do write a lot. Um, and now you paint and now it's yeah. Finding different <laughs> avenues, you painting, yeah. um, just, just getting out of my comfort zone. And yeah, that's pretty much what's really driving me and just kind of like, like I said, taking that step back and understanding that things may be bad now, but there's always that light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Michael? Um, if I'm good mentally. Um, I feel like uh, I was doing I was I was doing so well with the gym. I was going like I was going five times five times a week, and and then like. The whole like getting married thing and the honeymoon, <laughs> kind of, kind of a, uh, kind of. I didn't. I didn't. There was a gym on the boat, and like a sauna and everything, and we went the first day. Like to look at it, we're like, oh, this is where the gym is. Oh, it's got a full cool. list and that. That's how. That's how it happened, dude. And we like never went, <laughs> not once. And how many so, times did you hit the buffet though? Oh, dude, a lot. <laughs> I did some. I did some pretty, pretty epic things in there. But, um, yeah, so, uh, I'm trying to get back into the gym. Um, but, uh, for me, it's been, you know, for me, singing is like my, it's like one of my best, like, ways to cope with anything. And I've been doing a lot of it, uh, lately and I'm finally getting into like a routine. And, uh, so I, I feel, I feel good. I feel like, um, you know, I made a, I made a, a change as far as like, I live in Santa Monica now, basically. Damn. And so <laughs> it's it's not a. <laughs> so he lost the IE card. Yeah. <laughs> never, dude. Never. Your side card's gone. Now. No, it's not. We're no bragging rights from Santa Monica. <laughs> no way. No way. <laughs> Who's left in Riverside? No one. You're not. Me, dude. Coda, my dog. My dog's still there. His you heart. abandoned Coda. His heart. <laughs> dude, but um. I went to I went to his house to pick up a PA. You know, he'd already moved. He had already moved to LA, and Coda was there. So I sent a picture or a video of me petting Coda, and I was like, Are "You bummed that Mike abandoned you." And I was like, "Me too." I like Coda attack, attack Coda attack. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, just it's been I've been uh, in adjustment mode, and I feel like I'm starting to like have a routine now, and uh, yeah, it's been I feel like I've been good, like good mentally. Um, 
I was humbled last yesterday with like I think a milkshake took me down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, will I get a milkshake from that place again? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm not afraid. I'm not. I don't. <laughs> They're so bad. You shit on ain't your no shoes. Punk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was telling you guys this, but like for me, one of the, like the good and bad thing is that I'm not also. I'm like. I think because I'm lactose intolerant and have a bit of an allergy to it, I feel like I have the less of both worlds. Does that make sense? But I get both. <laughs> um, and so, but normally... And you still do it. I still do it. I'm not afraid, dude. I don't... I refuse to live in fear. So you're going to hit that bazooki tonight? Of course. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, so like normally, you know, most of the time when I have like, you know, pizza, ice cream, or even shakes and stuff, like it usually it, it hits me... In my stomach, in my gut. So, like, I feel that, and that's... I've lived with that my whole life. Not a big deal. Where it sucks is when it turns into, like, allergy types of symptoms yeah. and get the runny nose, watery eyes. And last night, man, it was rough because I had, I had it all. I had the stomach stuff, uh, and then I just, like, was, like, super phlegmy. Couldn't breathe while I was, like, laying down. And so, I don't... I don't even... Like, I, I, I feel like I... I had two dreams, so I feel like I had two different... I slept... Maybe I'm hoping maybe like maybe two hours is what I'm hoping yep. I slept. But I I remember I've I looked at the clock from ten PM to eleven, twelve, one, two, three, and I hate that. Yeah. It's welcome to my world, man. <laughs> dude. Yeah, so then but I got a nice little nap in today, so I feel feel alive. Nice. Yeah. Naps are key, bro. Dude, yes. people don't know that until they hit their late thirties. Isn't it crazy? You used to like hate taking naps as kids. Dude, I, I never was able to take naps. Now, if I don't take one, that's it. It's a wrap for me by 10. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's add a jam. And jams. Add a jam and get some heart heartburn. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's, a, what's a low sight song we can, we can throw on our playlist? One of the fun ones vocally for me um, is Malice. That's a really fun one vocally. It's it's just, man, yeah, that one hits. There's just a certain spot where it's like 20 seconds of nonstop singing, but it's like it starts in, in a low, then hits a high, then goes back to the low, but like nonstop just blah, 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 blah. That was fun to record that. Yeah. Sick. Malice. And then what's a song that you want to add any genre? I've been thinking about this this whole drive here. <laughs> and I've been flipping, but I want to add the new song from The Wonder Years, <laughs> The Year of the Vulture. Yeah. I love that song. Wait, it, it's a new song? They have a new it's, song? It's their newest song. Oh, okay. It's pro- it probably came out like a month ago, maybe. Oh, shit. The Year of the Vulture by The Wonder Years. Sick. Yeah, the song is sick. Mike, what do you want to add? <sighs> Dude, you know what's funny? song I've been listening to a lot lately is the one you added already. <laughs> that tipsy song, the... Oh, uh, it's so good, huh? It's so good. Well, while you uh, decide, I'm going to add that new Lakeview and Gideon track. Ooh. Uh, Money Where Your Mouth Is. Sick. I go stupid. That's just fucking banger. <laughs> Man, my music right now is so random. <laughs> let's keep it fun and let's take us on a journey to Australia. Let's do um, <laughs> it's, a band, it's a band called Frenzel Rom, F R E N Z A L, Frenzel and then Rom R H O M B. I feel like you'd like them, Michael. Friends of Romb. Yeah, let's do Never Had So Much Fun. Even though, I th- actually, my favorite song from them is probably Do You Want to Fight Me? <laughs> so which one? Actually, sorry, none of those. Let's do Punch in the Face. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Both of those are not good. <laughs> those are not good. Punch in the Face. Punch in the Face. That's a fun one. Well, you want to plug some socials before we get out of here? Uh, yeah. Uh, you can find us on Low Sight Band um, on IG. Uh, we are on Spotify, Apple Music, um, Amazon, 
uh, you name you name it, we're there. Um, we also got a video on YouTube for the song Better Nails, run up them numbers. Um, other than that, if anybody wants to personally hit me up, I'm at Deoxyhydro on IG. Um, you have Fre any frequent question asker? I'm a frequent frequent question asker, but I'm also a frequent ear. If anybody needs to talk about anything, Love it. Um, I'm here. Um, doesn't matter what time, I'll answer. Sick. Dude, thanks so much for coming, man. No, oh, thank Love you guys it. for having me. Of course. It's been a long time in the I making. I know. Thanks for, thanks for driving out. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got to drive all the way back. <laughs> let's, let's get some food real quick. Uh, at Walking Blind Pod everywhere for us. Follow, like, and subscribe. <laughs> Love you guys. Peace. Peace.